And so requiring minimum transparency would potentially jeopardize his lucrative implicit bias money-making machine. In a previous video, Saving Science number 8, I made the case that to ensure we're accountable to the public, we all need to take a strong stance against any researcher who does not meet a minimum transparency level in their research, or worse, any researcher who is not letting their grad student do transparent proper science. And this should particularly be the case for profs in positions of power who have job security from a tenured position. My video received considerable pushback from academics, uh, which is even more damning as to the current state of academia. Uh, though I did also receive praise and support, though mostly in private messages, uh, which is telling in itself. This is pretty sad. Uh, the fact that minimum transparency standards are not enforced in academia is already very dark. Uh, getting emotionally and childishly attacked for making that case uh, is even more incriminating uh, for academia. So here are the top three laughable ad hominem attacks uh, that I received. Number three, I think nobody here will disagree that science should be open and transparent, but publicly shaming people for not sharing your ideas or trying to harass them into doing science your way is unethical and probably not very effective. Uh, based on your Twitter post, you seem to have a real vendetta against Nosek and Poldrak. But this is false. I clearly stated in my announcement tweet, the very first tweet uh, announcing the video, that I have deep respect for Nosek and Poldrak for their major contributions to open science. And indeed, Nosek has been a major inspiration to me, and he knows that and I've admired him for almost a decade uh, until only recently when I realized he is still against minimum transparency levels. Number two, my position is like taking down Mother Teresa for not sorting her recycling properly. Uh, <laughs> at least this one gets bonus points uh, for creativity. And then he says, uh, true, maybe, useful, not, and then points me to uh, John Oliver videos. First of all, of course, they didn't recycle back then. <laughs> but seriously, um, comparing not recycling properly to profs not calling out unethical senior researchers uh, is at best simply laughable. And uh, number one, that I'm killing my own brothers by engaging in frat reside, which I admittedly had to look up, uh, seriously, this is uh, beyond words almost, and it's it's pretty frightening that a scientist would actually think like this. And finally, an honorable mention to Max Bertolero, who just sent an animated GIF uh, of a motocross. Basically, I'm missing the point, but this is interesting because actually he's accusing me of missing the point when in fact he's the one completely not getting it. This is really embarrassing and it's embarrassing to me but it's it's also embarrassing to the public, right? Think about how this looks to the public who are watching and increasingly uh, watching and becoming aware of all of the problems in academia. They're giving billions of dollars for research to be done and researchers doing that research are childishly attacking someone who simply wants all researchers to meet a minimum transparency standard. This is really hard to believe, but this is the state of academia. And it's not just embarrassing, it's actually, if you think about it, these attacks on me are nearing kind of the gray edge of unethicality itself. If you're attacking someone who's trying to fight for minimum transparency standards, which is an ethical requirement, <laughs> right? Think about that. So this is really damning. But also damning is that Nosek and Poldrak uh, didn't even bother to defend themselves publicly or change positions, which of course is, was a possibility, though a slim one. Uh, Poldrak did respond to a heartbreaking tweet from a courageous grad student who previously blew the whistle on her corrupt advisor but he had the gall to just reply and offer empty help again. And so the tweet read, 
I agree that senior profs could be more courageous in protecting junior researchers committed to good science. For example, I'm one of several junior researchers who cannot apply for academic jobs due to not having any senior references after blowing the whistle. Easy to say go elsewhere, less easy to actually do. And he responds, I'm really sorry to hear that. It's really horrible that junior researchers are put into positions where they have to potentially sacrifice their careers to do the right thing. For what it's worth, I would do whatever I could to help someone in this situation. So of course he can't go back in time, well unless he wants to use Bam's time machine and help her. But I thought that was a, a bit heartless because he's not doing things he could be doing right now. And so I responded by saying, well how about just going on public record that you believe all researchers should be obligated to a minimum transparency level. But no reply. It's crickets, crickets, crickets. But even more, he could do more than that. He could do to those corrupt senior researchers what I'm doing to him, which is to take to task anyone who doesn't require or enforce core ethical principles like transparency. And again, he's actually in a position of power and has a safe, tenured position, whereas I don't. I also have virtually no resources I'm further risking my professional opportunities uh, in terms of grant funding for curate science and the chance of landing an academic job. Despite this, I'm still doing way more than him by actually practicing what I preach and defending ethical principles, no matter how inconvenient, unpleasant, and damaging to my career goals. Regarding NOSEC, a new wrinkle has emerged whereby a supportive researcher stated that he's also sick of the hypocrisy of profs spouting lofty words about open science, but who still turn a blind eye to questionable senior researchers. He points out that NOSEC is actually in an awkward position, uh, given that he's receiving large speaking fees for implicit bias talks and training workshops that he regularly gives at corporate events. The exact amount that he's personally receiving is difficult to determine given, you guessed it, the lack of transparency, the lack of enforced transparency surrounding declaring conflicts of interest like these. But based on what he has disclosed on his CV, uh, it would appear to be in the ballpark of at least a quarter million dollars a year from giving implicit bias talks that talk about all the different ways our society is unconsciously biased, uh, unconscious racism, unconscious sexism, conscious biases against gays. Though to his credit, Nosek deserves some credit because he went to Twitter or was responding publicly last summer and went out of his way to publicly disclose how much uh, he is making and since when and like through his non other nonprofit on implicit bias they formed in 1998. So his personal financial gains prevent him from enforcing core ethical principles like minimum transparency because enforced transparency uh, would make it easier for other researchers to refute all of the implicit bias findings which form the basis of his lucrative implicit bias talks and workshops. And, and he's even still involved in publishing and conducting studies on implicit bias in addition to his open science work. And so requiring minimum transparency would potentially jeopardize his lucrative implicit bias money-making machine. Also curious is that Nosek is not disclosing this implicit bias speaking fees conflict of interest in his publications, or at least uh, I checked the first 10 publications on his website right now, couldn't find any mention of his speaking fees, conflict of interest, though he does sometimes disclose that he's a director of the Center for Open Science as a potential conflict of interest on papers about open science. So that seems honorable, but if there's selective transparency in his perceived conflict of interest, then that could be an issue. But I'm going to have to look more deeply into that.